Digital Technologies. APJ Abdul Kalam, Y.S. Rajan. About the authors of the lesson. Abul Pakir Janul Abdin Abdul Kalam. Better known as APJ Abdul Kalam. The 15th of October 1931 to the 27th of July 2015, was the 11th President of India from 2002 to 2007. A scientist turned statesman, Kalam was born and raised in Rameshwaram, Tamil Nadu, and studied physics and aerospace engineering. Recipient of Bharat Ratna, and also known as the Missile Man of India, Y.S. Rajan. Born 10th of April 1943, is an Indian professor, scientist and administrator. His is honorary distinguished professor in Indian Space Research Organization. Recipient of Padma Shri and pioneer in the field of science and technology. About the lesson. Abdul Kalam and Y.S. Rajan, in their book, India 2020. A vision for the new millennium. Envisage an increased use of information technology and digital skills in the future for the development of economy of the country. The sectors like agriculture, industry could make use of sensors, and modern electronics and information technology. Banking and insurance sectors shall have to use IT for various operations to render services to the public. Newer services like financial services, marketing logistics, trading, tourism, and preventive healthcare services etc., have emerged and they shall be playing a vital role in the economic growth of the country. Mobile communication. Satellite navigational system. Will be crucial in marketing logistics. For the development of cultural or knowledge-oriented tourism. Information technology. Can be made useful by making the availability of multi-presentations. On the cultural importance of the tourist spots to attract foreign tourists. Let's look at the lesson. Digital Technologies. APJ Abdul Kalam, Y.S. Rajan. In the coming years. Requirements for rapid changes in the skill of a large number of people in periods of say 3 of 5 years. May become a continuous feature when newer technologies are introduced into the economy. Such rapid changes will occur in all sectors, underlining how the agriculture, manufacturing and service sectors are intertwined. In the agriculture sector there will be better optimization of input resources like seeds, soil conditioning, fertilizer micronutrient mixes, pesticides and so on, as well as changes in the overall agriculture management. The agriculture sector may also use information technology much more intensely than it does now, be it in the use of remote sensing through satellites for regular monitoring of crops and soil conditions or water resources, or for better weather forecasts through satellites and ground-borne systems, or in the use of modern communications to be in closer touch with old or new markets. Water quality may be monitored more carefully in the future whether for human or animal consumption. Rapid improvements in advanced sensors would make it possible to have such sensing systems at affordable prices in many of our sectors. In the industrial and manufacturing sector, of course, the use of sensors and modern electronics and information technology will be a continual feature requiring rapid reorientation of the skills of not only the workforce but also the entire management including board level operations, installation of IT systems for all these sectors, training persons at all levels and maintaining and improving their skills would be a major service industry. Despite voluminous growth in the banking and insurance sectors, processing and transaction have been carried out by largely manual means. A national network of banking and the insurance business has to emerge. This lack has adversely affected efficiency and is a major cause of the high rates charged for financial services. The introduction of IT for various operations at the earliest has become a necessity. This means use of computers for near-total electronic data management and the use of telecommunications and multimedia data. Adopting a total systems approach. Some modern technologies like automated teller machine, ATM, automatic check clearing machines, telephonic banking, credit cards, and electronic fund transfers are being introduced in a small way and will be prevalent in most of the banks in the coming years. 
the Bombay and National Stock Exchange have recently adopted screen-based trading. At the lower end of banking, that is rural banking, many of these technologies may not have relevance except for the wealthy, at least for a decade or more. The problem in the bulk of our village communities is to generate money and make it available to workers, not merely for their subsistence but to carry out some economic activities of their own with small investments. Financial or lending systems for such poor rural folk could be patterned on the Grameen Bank systems successfully operated in Bangladesh. Among the newer services that have emerged are advertising, marketing management, and various consultancies. Some of the sectors considered to be of great value for India are financial services, marketing communication services, i.e., advertising, media, consultancy and infotainment, marketing logistics, trading and distribution, trade promotion services, human resources development, technical and management consultancy, testing, certification and calibration services, government administration, security services. There are also other important activities, to name a few, repair and maintenance, tourism and hotels, leisure and sports, resorts, cultural activities, old age care services. Preventive health care services. Marketing communication which comprises services such as advertising, market research and entertainment. Depend primarily on the stage of economic development and the nature of the target groups. Though currently 70% of the population is rural. By the year 2020 this figure should decline to 55% and the literacy rate is expected to rise to 80%. Because of these trends there would be major shifts in marketing communication. The strategy now is to focus on innovation and create new needs. Market research and market communication have so far been confined to a handful of consumer goods like soaps, cosmetic, toothpastes, beverage, and select food products. They are now being applied to white goods like television sets, refrigerators, and washing machines. In rural areas also the purchase of these goods is on the increase. The sale of an increased volume of products would also create a trend of market segmentation for high quality products. People would demand newer features, like greater user friendliness or greater portability or better aesthetics or looks. There are also other demands, which are of a technical nature. They are, greater reliability, tending towards zero repair over the product's lifetime or lower energy consumption or lesser noise or radiation emission, or lower levels of environment pollution, etc. These demand new standards of performance and greater technological inputs. In India too, such trends will be on the increase and local business and industries will have to learn to adjust to them. Marketing communication by foreign companies even through satellite-based TV and other information services will also affect Indian consumer preference even in rural India. Presently, Indian industries or markets or consumers follow trends which are often a decade or more old in the developed world. This has to change. Coming to packing, wherever possible we can avoid the older route of plastics, though they are necessary for some products. Biodegradable tapioca, link paper packages have been developed in our country. Why not try many such innovations instead of adopting mere invitations of other advanced countries? Another important technological input in market logistics, trading and distribution is going to be satellite communication and commuter networks. We often forget we are a vast country of about 3.28 million square kilometer, where goods move by truck or railway, fast. Growing, high volume economy cannot sustain its distribution channels without a first. Rate computer network and satellite communication channels. But a truck. Goods train or a ship each requires different links. Mobile communication can be established. Satellite navigation system helps in pinpointing the position as well. Mobility of business persons and traders is also crucial. Effective trade promotion services would be required to tap new markets and increase our exports. Short-term activities, 5 years should include strengthening IT for trade and building necessary infrastructure for meeting customer requirements. Medium and long-term activities, 10 to 20 years. 
should include large global databases, communication links and improved transportation and banking facilities. Most people are familiar with traditional concepts of tourism, hotels, access to easy transport, special places to visit. Starting from Taj Mahal, Goa, Kanyakumari the beautiful northeast, coastal India and the islands, the deserts and the Himalayas. But the modern day tourist accepts something more and different. He comes here not merely to eat, drink and make merry. Many want to learn more about the people they meet and the places they visit. We can call it cultural or knowledge-oriented tourism. There is plenty of scope for meeting such a requirement through the help of information technology. Multi-presentations can be made available in most tourist spots on music, culture, history, biodiversity and other features of that could open by giving foreign tourists glimpses of such information, including local maps by electronic mail even as they are planning their trips. As must have become self-evident, the services sector is dominated by human needs, comforts and convenience. Naturally, development of human resources becomes an important requirement for having a services sector. The very activity of human resource development and continuous skill upgradation in the face of changing technologies or preferably in advance preparation of likely changes in technologies and consumption styles is going to be another major component of the service sector. As the UN Human Development Report of 1995 makes clear, Massive investments in human capital and development of managerial and technological skills are needed in developing countries if they are to improve their people's living standards. End of the lesson. Thank you.